Well guys, here we are. Another adventure, another challenge. Except this time around, it's much different. We're on our own. We're in a new, uncharted area of Alaska, somewhere we know absolutely nothing about. Unguided and up for a new challenge. As I looked out the window as we were approaching Alaska, I couldn't help but notice just how vast and big and powerful these oceans looked. As we touched down in Sitka, I thought to myself, are we even gonna succeed? Can we find the species of fish we're after? So here we go, everyone. Sit back, turn up the volume, and be prepared to join us on this installment of Addicted Alaska. Welcome to Uncharted Oceans. All right, everyone. So one of the really cool things about this film that I'm excited about before we get into it is just the next generation of addicts. It's one of the major goals of ours is to really inspire young anglers. And we have a young angler with us on this trip. So can't wait for you guys to dive in and see this film. Here we go. Well, Lynn, where are we going then? I don't know. Since, we, since five minutes in the car, we screwed it up. Where are we going? <laughs> on the way up to Seattle, in the car, Marlon and Sean both said something about an airport and plane. So right there and then, I knew something was up and we were going somewhere. So the plan was not to tell him. Uh, I'm going like Florida or something. Florida? Alaska? Uh, Alaska? <laughs> it's a little far fetched. I don't think we're going that far. The idea was we were going to try to somehow manage to get all the way up to the Seattle airport before we flew out, before he even had an inkling of an idea that we were going to head to Alaska, which is one of the places that he has been absolutely dying to go ever since he started fishing. I don't know. Montana? Florida. Florida? I don't know. For a hot minute, I thought we were going to Florida, like somewhere like where there's bass and stuff because they tricked me like 9,000 times to where I was like, I'm going to like Egypt or something. So we get to the Seattle airport and we finally get our baggage claim, but it says SIT on it. And man, Layden picks up on that right away and immediately says, you know what, I know where we're gonna go. I'm just gonna search it on my phone. So being what a dad does, I confiscated it. Saskatchewan. Saskatchewan? No. So all he has is this SIT stuck in his head and we keep walking past the departure and arrival board all the time, but he keeps looking at the arrivals and can't figure out that SIT is the start to Sitka. San Diego? Uh, Marlon, he has the abbreviation SIT. I told him it's up on the board. He still hasn't figured it out. It's up there. <laughs> Let's go. Let's go. We're going to Salt Lake City. We're out of here. <laughs> Just, it's going to be all right. You'll know when we land. <laughs> <laughs> Sitting down at the terminal, we're getting ready to go. We keep telling him that our gate is C-15. Well, really it's C-17 and it says Sitka right there for probably an hour while we sat and stared at it. He's already guessed it about five times. Where are we going? We're sitting here at the gate. SIT. SIT. Can we sit? SIT. Yeah. Where's SIT at? No, we're sick here. No. When he finally realized where we were going, we were going to Sitka, but he didn't even know where Sitka was. It is the world capital for bottom fishing. That's all we're doing. Yes! <laughs> well, a little salmon. All of a sudden, he finally got excited and realized exactly where we were going. So 
but we have finally arrived. We're in Sitka, Alaska, everybody, and I have been all over the coast of Alaska, all over the mainland, I've been to some of the most beautiful places Alaska has to offer, and this is one place that I've never been, and I can't tell you how excited I am to see this awesome place with this amazing fishing reputation. When we first got there, it was crazy. We arrived and Joel's just waiting for us. He's got a minivan for us, and the plan was get to Joel's fishing shop and start to prepare. Pimp fan and Sitka, boys. Oh, good job. Fail already. So this whole escapade started when Marlon had this great idea to come up here and do a self-guided adventure with Fish Berendoff self-guided adventures. Joel is who runs this whole operation, Fish Berendoff, and I am so excited that we met him. He's just my type of people. Get along really, really well with the guy. So Joel has an amazing operation. He kind of gave us a tour of his equipment room his work shed, uh, the docks, the boats, all his freezers, how he keeps track of all the fish that we're hopefully gonna catch. And I can tell you what, like, as far as like a lot of operations being in Alaska is absolutely magnificent. It's like a pretty basic setup, but I've got everything you need to do the job. And then of course we have the wall of shame. <laughs> <laughs> This is really a self-guided adventure, guys. We gotta make our own leaders. He's got your own leaders, but we have got, of course, we figured what better proving ground than the Advantage Salmon Hook right here. So, we're whipping them up right now. Boom. So originally when me and Joel talked about this, we wanted to do it in September, do the coho fishery, but all the stars aligned to get us out here during this May fishery and do this saltwater fishing. Huge shout out to Joel, huge shout out to Fish Baranoff for having us out here. This trip's gonna be a fun one. That 150 is gonna be plenty. Yep. Way cool. This is gonna a be a- more fuel efficient. Here's our vessel. Here's our vessel for the trip, guys. Sean, you scared? Three days, three guys, 11 boxes of halibut. Never been here. Never been here before. 11 Just went nuts. Boxes. 11 50 pound boxes. I'm okay with that. I love halibut. It's not even funny. Yeah. There's you guys ready? <laughs> I, 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 so what you're saying is challenge There's accepted. The camera guy Got right it. There. 11 boxes. <laughs> well, we made it to our destination. We're at our hotel. That's right. We're not, uh, we're not gonna be on the camping or out in the woods this time. We're gonna be luxurying it up in a hotel on this trip. So all you addicts out there that like to go on a little bit more lavish trips, this may be one of those. This may be one of those. Beautiful. Jordan's wondering, man, why are we not sleeping on the ground somewhere like in the dirt somewhere? Yeah, I don't know how to handle this. Yeah, that's the next time we come hanging out. So we're staying at the Westmark Hotel on this trip. It's right downtown Sitka. It's an amazing place. It's walking distance to every one of the shops every one of the restaurants, every one of the bars that you'd want to see in town. And I'm completely blown away at the accommodations these guys have put up for us. Thank you so much, you guys. This is just the start of it. Well, this does beat sleeping on the ground. You can get a real bed. First thing I have to say I'm the most excited about is I'm in Alaska. I'm in a town that has cars, road, bars, restaurants, and I'm actually sleeping in a bed on this trip. the bridge that are don't even take a right right here so day one starts with a briefing over at fish Berendoff with joel because you're literally hopping in a boat you're getting a map you're getting guidelines but you're on your own so it's a matter of like looking at the weather in the morning deciding he gives us some pointers on where he thinks that we could find some success and after giving us our bait and our equipment it's it's good luck boys So day number one, here we go. And I've spent a lot of time in Alaska. Like I said before, I fished all different parts of it. I fished the ocean, I fished the mainland, uh, and I fished it in some of the most remote areas in Alaska. And so coming to a place like this where the fishing is so popular and there's such a large fleet of boats, I was wondering really what to expect and how fast paced and how plentiful the fishing was gonna be. It's a big question mark and out we go. Here we go, day one. Look at this place. Look at that shot. Sean, get that scenery. All right, guys. Once we pass these breakers, we're on our own. 
You ready, Marlon? Got my life jacket on. I'm invincible. Tally ho! We knew day one from the weather report was going to be just a little bit rough, so we decided to head out and kind of take this north channel kind of a long way around to some of the salmon and the halibut grounds. But as far as boat ride goes, it was one of the most beautiful boat rides I had been on to date. Jumped out of the water. What was? <laughs> there it is. Woohoo! Okay, we made it to the ground. Obviously, there's quite a few fishermen around, but we're getting distracted by this awesome whale. The thing flew out of the water and breached right in front of the boat. Marlon and the camera start freaking out. I see it splash. We whipped around, and we're getting some awesome shots. We are we're anchored, but there's a but. I mean, it's very obvious right now with the way the tide's running, like not knowing crap out here, that the charter fleet is definitely like hiding, hiding behind an island, kind of waiting for the tide to slow down. So we don't want to mess with these guys. So we're just going to be off to the side. And we'll see if we can get something anchored and something going. Again, no idea, but we're going to find out. Little herring chandelier. Here we are. Thunk, thunk. I'm gonna come about four or five cranks. Real quickly, we could tell it wasn't the right spot. The bottom felt sandy. Um, the currents were kind of just doing some weird stuff, and it was pretty windy. We were getting tossed around, and I can already tell my crew wasn't feeling very good. So a quick decision, we decided to bail out of there because we knew of some better halibut fishing. So we decided to send it all the way out to some of the outer ground. I dropped it down to the bottom and the second it touched the bottom, I had the first halibut of the trip on. I have a fish. Fish on. Yeah. Fish on. Attaboy Cam, good job. I got a fish That's on. a butt, that's a butt. I think it is. It's going sideways. It's got the butt. Oh yeah, yeah, boys. Oh, crap. I do. You get this out of the way. Smoke that. In here, Cam. Whoa, he's pulling. He's pulling. I just wanted to just drop this jig down real quick. It's rough out here. Before they get sick, I wanted to make sure we were in the rocks. I tapped the jig down. It took about freaking about a minute. Come on, fish and chips. Come on, fish and chips, Lane. You want in on this? What? Marlon's on, Marlon's on. Holy on. crap, run. We got one on, Addicts. I, I dropped down to the bottom with the old octopus, made one little bounce, and there he was. Yeah. There he is. There's a halibut. Gotcha. Little guy. Gotcha. Whoa, 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 whoa. Lost oh, he's him. Gone. Lost him. Well, first hookup. Cameron failed. Lane, you got one real. Got one. Real, real, Lane. You already got one. Real. Oh, right, he came off. Here we go. I'm on. Got him. Got him. <laughs> yeah, baby. Yeah, yeah baby. baby. Oh, whoa, whoa. Get yeah, that box baby. out of there. Get that box out of there, Marlon. Yeah. We need 10 of these, so <laughs> guess what? We're going, we're going to work. Absolute chaos. Come on. Yeah, Lane. <laughs> Boy. Yeah. Oh. This is sick cut, baby! <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> Look at Lane, Lane's getting worse! Look at his face! He's gonna pee! Oh, I'll have to take it. Woo! Oh, I see, I see Tyler. Oh, it's a good one, dude. This looks pretty good. Oh, it's a nice one. Oh, yeah, easy, easy. Oh, no, no. Got him, got him, that a boy. There's another one. <laughs> yeah. yeah! That's not a bad one. Oh, no. no, we'll they're getting bigger. <laughs> wow. Lane's got a hog on. He yeah, doesn't. Uh, tension, no, tension. No, I'm good. Like Here, you hold, I'll crank. Oh, I see, you know, you're going to get him. Here he comes. I see the color. Come on, one more, one more. Back towards me, back towards me. You got him. Yeah. 
That's a little guy, but you know what? I don't care. It's your first helmet, dude. Ping pong paddles, baby. <sighs> nice job, baby. Good job, dude. Those are all good eaters. Screw it. Oh, oh. You know what? First day, they're not 100 pounders, but we're going to take some. You know what? We're allowed to kill 10 of these a day. It's two per person. We got five crew members. That one goes in the box, and we decide to play a game. Okay. Every halibut that we catch today, we want to be a little bit bigger than the one before. Oh, Marlon's are Get the electric reel out. Somebody, what the hell? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. oh my gosh. Get the electric reel out. We can just drop these things. Tell me what you see color Nobody step back. Nobody. There he is, Cam. Cam. Got it. Yeah. Oh, I'll take that one. Yeah, three. Pacific halibut, addicted style here. Self guided. A couple freaking ping pong paddles, but you know what? Meat in the boat. The limit's two oh, per oh, person yeah, per. I'm on, I'm on. Two per person per day, oh, and we're rallying them. Oh, we're rallying them. I think we're going to find a big one soon enough. <laughs> We got to get through the chickens. Remember what he said? Yep. We he said, work the chickens. Out. Work the chickens. Okay, I'm going to leave these fish. Awesome. Yeah, boy. Yeah. Yeah. yeah good move. Little, good one. Is that a better one? Bro, about exactly the same as my last. You want to kill it? What do you think? Well, he's dead now. <laughs> <laughs> got him. They are just chewing. That's a fatty. Yeah. Oh. Yes, sir. Oh, my God. There's a good one. I think that's the biggest one we've got, is it? I feel like it's decent. Whatever. He's dead. Yeah, maybe not. Okay. This will be the last ping pong paddle we kill. Chicken we kill. That's our biggest fish by far. So let's just weed them out. Jordan, why have you got? I got one. Already. I say, Jordan, why have you not got one yet? <laughs> They're getting bigger. I like that. That one, oh, I'm hearing definitely bigger. We're not killing anything smaller than that. Now it's we only killed bigger and bigger. We got five. Paddles for the day, I mean in about 10 minutes. Oh, oh that, that's a really big one. Don't, don't let the boat tear that hook out. He's got a good one. <laughs> this one's ripping line. Is he ripping line still? He's taking line about three or four times. Oh, taking line. Oh. Yeah, come on. Wow, Alex. I really don't have him very far. There he is. Oh, got him. Color? Yeah. Uh, yep, I let him go. We're gonna let that one go. Yep. Okay, okay. A little bit smaller, about the same size as the first four we got. Kicking him loose. Kerb plonk. Kerb plonk. Oh, there he is. <laughs> we got him. Oh, no. <laughs> he's just getting slammed. I thought when you meet it, because I could tell you small. Yeah. Oh my god. Yeah, so I guess maybe stick with the artificial, huh? And then it was like pure chaos for two, three hours of us just nonstop just bringing halibut into the boat. Oh, God. Oh. Marlon, doubles. We're doubled again. That, that's a real one, Marlon. That's a real one. Back to the rod holder addicts. Uh, what do I got? Bye bye. Time to pull in the ringer. So on this trip, we brought some really cool lures. And one of the lures that we brought is a special lure from Mustad, and we really wanted to see if it would work. I've always been really intrigued by this lure. Let's see if it's gonna catch some halibut. We're gonna coat it in bud juice. I'm gonna fill the whole head cavity. There's a little hole right here, watch this. Insert the butt juice and squeeze it all in there. Oh yeah. Next level, folks. Go Squiddy. There we go. Not in that time. Or not. Have him that time. Oh, I still have him. Whoa. Popped it off. Oh. I mean I don't know if I'm what I'm feeling, but that felt pretty good. Oh he's on it again. There we go, it again. 
He's on it again, look. look. Mm -hmm. Whoa, 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 whoa! <laughs> it just pulls on it really hard. Oh, is it? I think it's there. Oh, now I got a reel. What do I got? What do I got? Oh, it's a halibut. <laughs> nice halibut. All right. Look at that, you old Mustad Ink Vader. <laughs> Eight. Jordan, we're calling Jordan Big Fish Jordan because he seems to get everything like 36, 37. He's always lucky. I'm okay with that. Whoa, 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 Holy cow, man. Right. That's a better fish. Ink wig. Biggest of the yeah. day, guys. Woo! Yes. Ink Vader. I love the electric old Mustad reel. jig. Wow. There it is. That's a good fish. Loins. 36 inch or? Loins. Loins. That guy's got 36 inch loins, if you know what I'm saying. Oh my oh. God. It's gonna break the fucking rod holder. Let go, move, lady. This thing's been ripping. Okay, it's okay. We're good, we're good. Don't, just, the only thing you can do is rip the hook out of him. There he is. What do I got, Cam? Oh, Actually, that's bigger. That's yeah, 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 yeah. Big enough, don't you think? Yeah, yeah. yeah, that's a good halibut. Okay, get ready. Watch the lead. Watch the lead. They're coming in, coming in. That's a good halibut. Yeah! Good job, guys. Dude, that's a 36, 37 inch. Dude, that's a good halibut. But this is like a 30 pounder. Imagine what a 100 pounder is going to do. That's what I just said. It's coming. Stay tuned. Keep watching. So we just land this really, really nice halibut, one of the bigger ones of the day. And all of a sudden, Layden hooks up, and we think he has another halibut, so none of us are really like, none of us are even paying attention. We're like, oh, whatever, Layden's got another halibut on. Next thing we know, something else comes to the surface. That's in our slot, 35 to 40, right? No, no, 30 to 35. 30 to 35 is the slot. I thought I had a halibut, but once we got it closer and it started to fight more, I realized this was not a halibut. No, go. Oh. Oh, look at that pot right there. <laughs> That's our first lane of the trip, guys, but they gotta be 30 to 35 inches where he's we're at. He's gonna be right in it, dude. Layden, he's gonna be right in it. Oh, I'm pretty sure he's gonna be right in it. Come on, Biggie Beautiful. That's good. Oh my God, he's right there. That's good. It's 35. Yep, that's good. That's good. Jaws? I wanna make sure he's good. The jaw's up against the edge. Look at that, 35. Yeah, he is definitely, like, I'm trying to pull it. Yeah, that's his, I mean, look. He's not 35. That's a good fish. That's as big of a ling con as you can kill on this trip. Good job, dude. Yes. Lane, right, Lane is bunker? the ling master. Got it? Good boy. He ends up catching a beautiful, like 34 and a half inch ling cod, which is exactly one half inch underneath the slot limit of something that's too big that we wouldn't be able to keep. All right. Chicken ranch. A couple 36, 37 inchers. We got nine of those bad boys in the box, but first taste of Sitka. And I can tell you what, we want to leave one on the table. We got to leave one spot open. We kill legally kill 10 today. But we got some link hot to do. We want to go salmon fishing and we just want to leave one spot open just in case we get that one big one we're going to be after this week. So I can't be more impressed for a good hour and a half freaking rodeo. This is Jordan's, a rodeo. Jordan's reeling another one in as we speak. Right. I didn't want to clean up empty handed. <laughs> but I think we're going to get out of here. It's getting swelly. And I think we need to go do some other stuff. It's bait. I'm going right through. It's all bait, I think. Because I'm going right through all the birds. That, that, that's on. That's on. That, I got a rock fish. There we go. I don't know 
what it is. Where are you at, Jordan? I'm right here. This thing does not feel like a sandwich. So tonight's dinner is going to be at the hotel that we're staying at by our gracious guest and part owner of the business here. So they want us to bring a black rockfish to the table tonight. There he is. Making a move. Yep. Executive decision by the captain. So after trolling for salmon for a little while, we decided, you know what, we're going to head to the shore and just kind of play around, get familiar with some of the rocks. And just, just the topography and the geology of the area is just absolutely amazing. There was lots of hidey holes for fish to sit. Yeah, yeah it's not, not super hard to get out. Oh, there he is. Rockfish for sure. But we might get lingcod bait. You never know what you're going to get. Another black. A wee little black. Yeah. There it is. First little experimental fish. I think the Maybe coolest part about I think the coolest part about this so far, we're noticing is we're using our imaginations as fishermen. We're bouncing around all these different spots, and every time we cast, we're catching something. So, pretty freaking interesting. Learning everything as fast as we can on day one. Yeah, there, I got you. You got it. Yeah. I don't know, but it's, oh, I see it. Oh, it's a china. Little baby china rock. China, baby. Little China. Did they have poison? Yeah, yeah it'll hurt you. Oh, I got him. Got him. Oh, yeah. That's a little nicer one. A little bit bigger, though. Let's kill him. I saw how big he said they were all going to be. Oh, what the frick? He just got eaten by something else. He just got eaten by a link on. Uh oh. Just got eaten by a link on. I swear I just. With a fish on. I bet he did. Yes, 100%. <gasps> oh, that's freaking sea bass. But that thing. Would... That one, you got eaten by a link on, dude. I... Oh, yeah, he did. Yeah, he does. Look at the teeth marks. I'm dropping one of these big teeth down. Oh, yeah, he does. Look at the teeth marks. Dad, look at this. He got grabbed. Put a spreader bar on. Get a big yeah. get a hook. Yeah. Let's get him. We get the black rock and we bring it up and it's got teeth marks on the side of this black rockfish. And now we finally know what we're dealing with. I can't, this is, what the frick? That's a big fish. That's a link, I think. That's a big fish. Oh! Oh yeah, oh yeah! Hey, someone help! Oh, oh. Keep on, just keep finding them. I can't, it's going Get on out. Get on the rocks, get me the rocks. Go easy, go easy, keep on, keep pressure. Oh! My God! That just got, oh my God, it almost took the rod. <laughs> George, you think I have a link on? George, I need, I need, to get I need, I need help. Way, I think I need to fight that thing, lady. I got you, brother. Someone help. Yeah. Switch Here. me. Just for a second. This thing's cute, whatever it is. Good job. That no! Oh, I... Ooh, got it. Copy that. There we go. Come out. Woo! Hey. You sure about that, Good job, buddy. It's not a keeper. Aiden has just hooked into something giant. We do not know what it is, but it is ripping line. Oh my God. Yeah, he has a link on in a hole. And he just broke it off. Yeah, yeah, there's holes here. Like, look at the bank right there. That's, that's exactly what the bottom looks like. Stop, 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 what are you doing? I'm, like, I'm not doing anything. <laughs> oh God, that was freaking scary. I gotta say the day today was extremely unexpected. You know, we didn't get all the species that we had. We got a little bit later start, but that's the thing about when you do it yourself. And especially that first day, you know, Joel and everybody can give you all the tips that you need, but you have to take your own knowledge and your own ambition and go to these places and find these fish. And I was not disappointed at all. That was one of the most amazing halibut bites I've ever seen. Now we have some more goals for the trip. Day number one's over. Let's go eat some dinner.
boys are up there doing the vacuum sealing as you guys saw awesome little setup but we got a shipment of some of our Akuma Cedros rods we've got some 962 XHs we're kind of lining them up and getting everything ready for tomorrow because today was the warm-up even though it was epic awesome got our feet wet got a little salty but man tomorrow like we got salmon on the menu and some more halibut maybe laden will land another 34 and a half inch ling who knows right but gearing up we got jacob here one thing really cool about uh coming down here is you know these guys are on it man the second we pulled in we started playing the fish jacob's here cleaning the boat getting everything ready for tomorrow because day two it's gonna happen quick so Joel being the amazing host that he has, he had a great plan over at the West Mark for cooking some of our catch. And you know what? I have been longing for some fresh halibut fish and chips. So I have to say the accommodations here at the West Mark are top tier. And so to be able to come back to the lodge, check back into your room, get cleaned up, and have that fresh fish, honestly, that was damn near still wiggling, cooked for us in the way that it was, the flavors that we've tasted, the laughs that we had, the camaraderie we enjoyed around the table was amazing. And I would recommend anybody that comes here, even if you're not staying at Westmark, go in there, have them cook your fish, and enjoy that incredible meal that you saw here this afternoon. Look how beautiful and white that meat is. Oh, God. This one almost has that sweeter flavor. I think what he did was throw some brown sugar in with that Creole and that blackened seasoning. That might be some of the best fish I've ever had. The cooks there knocked it out of the park. I don't think I can even walk now because we just actually ate dinner and I'm doing these interviews right now and I am as full as full can be. But I can tell you what, if they have us over tomorrow night, I'll be more than happy to go. Fish on. Yeah. Fish on. Got him. 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 Oh boy! Boy! Look at that! Yes! That's another cool thing about Joel's operation. He's got a boat fuzzy waiting for you at the door every morning. That's Rich. Hi, buddy! Hi, buddy! So after the beatdown that we had on day one and getting some pretty good quality halibut, we decided that we were going to make way for the Cape just so we can get in on that action once more. Day two. We have a good plan today. We basically, what we're gonna do is we're gonna run to a specific area where we know there's a bunch of little halibut hanging out and just go fill our box with six to eight halibut. After that, we're gonna head out into the open ocean. We're gonna really do some searching. And we knew we were gonna be kind of up against the weather, but you know, we had a good locked on spot. There was plenty of fish there. We wanted to get a few more chickens in the boat. And we knew if we worked hard enough, took Joel's information and Mike's information to heart and applied it to the areas we were going to, we'd have a really good chance of finding a big fish. That smells like something a halibut's gonna like. It actually kind of smells good. <laughs> Oh yeah, it smells good, bud. Yeah, I smell. got a little whiff of anise, but I got the rest of it. Oh. Yeah. I got our cod guts here. Just hanging it all. Hanging it all out there. Send it. Got one going? Yeah. We're on them, boys! We're on them! Alright. First tap down, gotta love it. What do you think, Jordo? It's a halibut. Strike the record, he's claiming halibut. The one thing I will say though is these halibut, you can pr usually tell because they fly all the way to the top. Lay down, you want a real one in on the electric reel? There yeah. he is. <laughs> oh, he's a. Whoa, 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 whoa. 
whatever, if we're gonna keep these. How big is that one? The smallest one ever. Big. It wasn't the smallest one ever, but it was definitely on the smaller side of what we call Whoa! Okay. Cam? I got them on. I'm just slowly just, I'm just winching them. I was gonna give this away, but I can't get it in the rod holder with the strap here. Come here, ping pong paddle. It's a ping pong paddle! No, not that one. I told you, it's not on. I just feel like a big enough one's gonna eat it in here. There we go. No. Oh my god. He's still there. He's still there, Will. All right, he's moving. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Whoa. Oh, easy, easy. It's stopping the electric wheel. Oh. Okay, hey, I got some good. Yeah, except for this one. Holy shit. He's like pulling nuts right here. Hold on. Real, 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 real. real. He's way out there. Yeah. Little decent ping pong paddle. He's not even a chicken. He's ping pong paddle. He's the biggest ping pong paddle we've seen. Dude, this thing's all right. got some weight, oh. I think. Uh-oh. Oh, I think you do. Marlon's got something something real. Yeah, there he goes, there he goes. Whoa, he's running. Oh, God. There he is. Oh, that's why. Damn it. Lame. Marlon. I'm tired. I'm gonna take a nap. saying much though. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Now we go hunt giants. After we get about a half dozen in the box, man, that weather really churned up. It got rowdy and we decided, you know what? It's time to go hunt for the big ones. So we made our way across the bay to go behind some sheltered islands because with the way, the direction the wind was going, it was blowing all that energy right up against where those halibut were. But there were some sheltering islands that would give us a little bit of protection from the wind and the swell and make it a little more comfortable to fish. Let's get deeper this way, let's do it. And nothing to lose. And how deep is it? 110 out of 12. Okay, I'm sticking with a one. You are free to drop. Keep sending. Got one, man. Oh, Whoa. Whoa. what is this? Man, man. <laughs> the boy. What is this? Why is he a king, dude? Dad, take He's this. He's kind of fighting like a king. Dad, take it. No. You got it, brother. You ever hit the damage chips and watch this show? Huh. I don't know what this freaking hat is. It's big. Oh, boy, Be careful, boy, buddy. Yeah. It's honestly, Lane, it's probably just a rock that you grabbed. No, because it was when it was running, bro. Yeah, rocks can run. Running, bro. Oh, yeah. Sure. All I know is if I would have had it, I would have had that thing in already. You don't know what you're doing. Oh, Ooh, Haley would have had it in now, too. <laughs> oh, I see it. What is it? Lingy. Baby Ling. Ling Ling. Look at this cutie pie. It looks like it's pulling a little bit, doesn't it? No, it's heavy. This is the cool thing about this, everyone is when you're fishing 300 plus feet of water, you never know what you're gonna bring up. 
We were talking to one of our buddies that lives in town and he said yesterday they caught a 60 pound halibut in 1500 feet of water. You it's, never know. It's fighting now. You just never it's know. It's fighting now. Halibut, halibut. No just kidding, Link Pod. <laughs> That's a lot of work. Not on that time, huh? Yeah, he's on there, dude. Oh, you pulled it out of there. That probably is a halibut then, dude. If you're ripping him out like that. Maybe go try to hit around that thing. You know that drift is going that way? I bet if I start right here, I'll hit that one. I'll hit both of them. Okay. Oh, you got Jordan? I All right, hang four. On, We've resorted to the straight up hole hopping, guys. Cam's up here using this fishing knowledge. Honestly, we're looking at spots that we said, I would live there if I was a halibut, and especially if I was a big one. And we're just bouncing around. Me and Marlon are running three rods off the back, working every little pocket throughout the hole. Hopefully it pays off. He's short. So after anchoring a few times and drifting a few times, and we I think we checked about a half dozen spots, it was pretty apparent that like hunting one of these big fish down was gonna take some time. We're doing everything we can to try to find a big one. It's really one of the major goals of the trip is to get a mega. So we are trying everything. We're doing chum bags, which is something we've never done. We're doing longer sets, so sitting for a couple hours at a time just waiting for a big halibut to come in. And I really hope we can make it happen. That way. That's where we're going. But just to break it up a little, we will pull into some of the rocks just for a little bit of black bass action. Yeah. Pro laden. Always catches the first. Pro laden. Yes, pro laden. I, yeah, I don't that. know about that, but. Mm -hmm. Oh boy. I would be late. I didn't Oh, oh, it's a nice spot. Do it. Yeah, we should keep that. That's a nice one. Yeah, might as well. So you know, even though the rest of day two ended up being a little bit of a struggle, I loved it because all of us were still catching fish. We were still hunting around. You know, just the search of these big halibut down here is very, very fun. And then on top of that, you get to catch all the yellow eyes, lean cod, whatever else. And it's just a fun day with friends, even though we didn't accomplish our goal of getting a big one. So day two, we kind of pulled up to the dock and we never found that big halibut we wanted. And you know, we were pretty pleased with the results. We know we're gonna have to put in some time to like try to find a big one. It's kind of early season. Those really big fish haven't moved up into the bays. They're still offshore doing whatever they're doing, but got the fish cleaned, got everything put away, got gears and leaders all tied up for the next day. And tomorrow morning, we are gonna go after Mr. Biggs. The day is over and these guys have something special in store for us. I love it when you come to a place like this and you're instantly family. Uh, and you have people that want you to be happy and they want to share their beautiful things with you, whether it be their landscape, their, their, their home, or something like what you're about to see. So another one of the amazing things about being here in Sitka and, and meeting Joel of Fish Baron off was he had some connections with someone with a 90 foot yacht. Go for it. Get on in there. This is a real wheelhouse. Hello, everybody. Hello. Hi. All right, we're not going. Woohoo! 
We're not. Oh, this is Welcome cool. Oh, by the way, yeah. we're out for a couple of days. This is the going. coolest thing I've ever seen. That's your own You never Appreciate get out of the Welcome, everybody. I am Crystal. My husband Crystal. Bill picked you guys up previously. He's a good man. We're going to take you guys down to Silver Bay today. And we're going to try to find you a bubble feeding humpback whale. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Ooh. Halibut ceviche, and they're waiting for us to kind of sit down and chill so they can start frying some fresh ling cod. I believe there's some white king sashimi back there too. I mean, after fishing all day, you're gonna go to a meal like this, like give me a break. We were able to go on this yacht, eat this five course meal, hang out with our friends. They had a bonfire, literally like one of those propane things that's on their top of the deck of the boat. It was just such an amazing experience and something that's gonna last in my head forever. And just like this whole trip, I feel like I can truly say it's one of the best ones of my life. So the Bear Paw is a new operation and you guys, if you are interested at all, we'll put the link in the description to this boat. Uh, but this is like a floating hotel in a way. We didn't get to stay on the boat tonight, but we got big plans for tomorrow. We have to find this big halibut. It's time to go to bed and get some rest. All right, guys. So one thing being a self-guided trip, you know, you get all this like bits and pieces of information from our friends and from Joel and stuff on suggestions on where to go. But today was absolutely amazing. We wanted, to, we got halibut. Cool. Check that list now. Tomorrow. We want to get big ones. We're about to do a pretty intensive run down through a whole bunch of islands and stuff. And so like we're doing some proper kind of pre-planning right now, just understanding like how many miles we're going to go. It's looking like we're going to be doing something around 30 to 35 miles tomorrow down through some fjords and down through some pretty amazing country. I think tomorrow now, like we're going to go freaking monster hunting. day three and today we have bigger fish to fry. We are looking for the biggest halibut any of us have ever laid eyes on. We've kind of been talking to some of the locals around here and kind of getting some ideas and we decided we were gonna send it way down in between all the islands. Looks like the weather would be pretty good for you guys to do it. The morning run was absolutely beautiful. We're going through some of the islands, checking stuff out, but we knew we had some coordinates that we needed to go see what was going on. You pull up the Navionics and the charts that they give you here and you start looking at the bottom contour of the river and this place is just such a volcanic miracle where you can see where these lava flows and these calderas have been pumping out this lava and creating this structure on the bottom of the ocean for millions of years and now it's all cooled and it's this beautiful, beautiful habitat for all these fish. So day three, we're headed out. We know how to find these fish. We know where to find them. We just have to get them on the line. an area that might might hold we're searching around trying to find exactly where these guys have given us these tips to go and uh, looking for these giant halibut can be a, a feat you have to move a lot you have to find an area that's perfect for them and then sit there and really stay patient and sit and wait till these things move towards you so the camera's gonna try to keep me level here instead of dropping the anchor and going through all the work we're gonna drop it down hit the bottom feel what that bottom actually feels like whether it's rock whether it's sand, gravel, whatever it is, then make a decision whether or not to stay here for a given amount of time. So back up a little bit. 
Backing up. Backing up. Are you deployed? Yeah, I'm deployed. Is it hitting yet? No. Yep, got him. There's bottom. Rock? Yep. Yeah, it's definitely rock because it's changing depth up and down quite a bit. Got some octopi. This ain't the baby bait. I'm gonna find out if anything's sitting down there right now. Oh, there he is again. Oh, I'm getting bit. I'm getting bit. Yeah, here we go. Here we go. We're going. I thought I saw your rod get tapped a second. Yeah. I mean, I'm hitting bottom over a few swells. It's small. It's not like. Yeah. Fish? Yeah. Probably a yellow eye, eh? That's cool though, I want to see one. Maybe it's an anemone. No, oh. it shed shape. No, I said it fought for about five feet. It's starfish. There he is. Yep. Oh, it just popped off. Oh, grab it. Yeah, grab it. Holy well, shit. The... Look Pretty at yellow him. Eye. All right, I'm gonna get the descending device. Gonna have to send him back down. So this is a barrel trauma. It's from coming up too fast from the bottom of the ocean. Their, their swim batter blows out. We have a device that will safely send this thing back down because you can't keep these in this part of Alaska. Beautiful fish though, incredible. I'm letting it stop. Open the bail, open the bail. That's a help, that's a help. Yeah, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. That thing was pulling hard at the start. I think I'm... So guys, we finally got our first good bite. We don't know what it is, but we're reeling him up. And he's definitely tugging. He's not... He ain't small, whatever it is. Oh, I see color, color, color. Yep, big yellow eye. Giant yellow eye. Oh, yeah! <laughs> See what I mean? They just gonna get bigger. Wow, what a cool fish. That one's giant too. Let's get him unhooked. There you go. That's cool. Wow. Crazy looking fish. Super crazy. Look at their freaking dorsal fin. Gnarly. And that's why they call them a yellow eye. Look how bright freaking yellow that is. Super cool. There he is. Damn it! Oh, I couldn't get to the reel fast enough. Oh my god, you let go of it. That's a real one. That's a real one. That's a real something. Oh! Burning him good. I think it's a halibut. Think so? Yeah. I do. It's got that flat fish feel to it. Okay. Yeah, it's a halibut. Calling halibut. Uh, I'm calling, calling halibut. halibut. Strike the record. Jordan Kanigi has said that we have hooked our first halibut of the day. Oh, gosh, he's strong. We're getting really close. Lane reverse, turn the wheel to the right. Big, big lane. Snaggling. That's why he's fighting so crazy. First good fish of the day, everybody. The pressure is off a little bit. It's not our target species today. We really kind of plan on spending an entire another day to look for big lings. Yeah, well, we're bringing them up. We've been here an hour or more. We refreshed our bait twice. And we're going to start playing on the screen up in the front of the boat, trying to look at the different spots out here, some different hunting ground, basically. And we found a spot that looks very promising. It's a little pinnacle. It's got a lot of different channels going off into deep water. There should be some fish there, but we got to do something. It's time to move. Be honest. How many of you ladies out there are really stoked right now in this shot? <laughs> So throughout the struggles of trying to find a big halibut, one of my favorite parts of day three was the whales. We got on, on these whales that were doing these like big splashes on bait with their tails. One of the coolest things I've ever seen. 
right before we decided to pull to this one island, uh, we looked out and we seen some whales going crazy. There's three over there too. What's he doing? He's splashing the bait around. He's oh. splashing the bait. This area of Alaska is such a bread belt of, of bait and, and ecosystem. There's so much life that's teeming in the waters here and the whales have blown me away so far since I've been here. And it's something I'll never forget, probably one of the highlights of my trip so far, being able to watch these whales in their natural habitat like this, it's been incredible. And the shots that we got were absolutely amazing. Sean had the drone kind of up real high and Marlon finally yelled at him and said, you know what? I want that whale to knock the drone out of the air. Like, let's get in there and see some really cool whale footage. One of the coolest things I've ever seen being out in the water and in the ocean, and you can pretty much see whales every day you're out here in Sitka. That was one of the cool things about this trip was it wasn't just about the fishing, it was about the experience, being out there and seeing everything and spending time with your really good buddies. So, so after the whale show, which they, you know, 10 out of 10, good job guys. They really put it out for you guys. Hopefully you guys enjoyed it as well. We decided to get on our drift and we picked this one little reef because we found it to be about 160 feet, kind of rolled down into about 180, 190 feet and had the right type of rocks that we're looking for. Dropping! Dumping her to the bottom. I don't even care. We're gonna find out right now. Maybe there's a big butt down there. We're in 260 feet of water. I got some fish on. Oh! There we go. Jordan hooked into something good. Can't neutral. Neutral aid. I got a big one. I got something giant and it is ripping me up. That a boy. It is ripping me up on the circle hook. And Double. it is heavy. The monster freaking link it is heavy. That a boy. Oof. Ah. Only thing I can do is rip it out of him, so we're just gonna be easy. It's gonna be a while. Reverse! Okay. We got a double, folks. We got a double. Cam dropped us on this spot, said we're gonna try it. And looky there. This is way bigger than anything I caught yesterday. Okay. <gasps> it's gotta be how Oh, it's scary. Oh, it's scary. I'm cold. Every time the rod like releases, yeah. I get scared. See that big ling? Okay, got a big ling on this side. Big ling on this side. We kick him loose. We're just here camps fishes. Hey, this is a how Real long, real. Ooh, there he goes. Oh, God, God. This has gotta be a how it's still just kicking ass, so I don't think it's a bottom fish. It could be a big wing. It's been a tough, long day. A lot of checking stuff out. Just want to see this fish. Just don't let go. He's still fighting all the way in. It's got to be a halibut. When I got grabbed on that rod and I felt that fish load that thing up and bury it into the water, I knew like we had had the one. Oh, it is heavy. I don't know what I got, guys. I want to say it's a halibut. I want to believe. I want to believe. Oh, what's going on? But man, when it ate it, when it ate it, it ate it good. Lady, put it in reverse. 
Here he comes. Here he comes. Halibut. Halibut. Big halibut. Big halibut. Okay, give me the hook. Give me the hook. Give me the hook. Give me the hook. Here it is. The fish is at the boat. I have this giant gap in my hand. I hit the thing in the head. Get him in the boat. And that was a bad decision. Wait, easy, easy. We need the hook. Well, apparently when you take a small, tiny salmon gap and only stick him in the head just a little bit, all it does is just piss him off. Did we do that? Stop, stop, everybody stop, everybody stop. We're good, hand me that hook. He's on the fucking prop. Is he? Laden, neutral, neutral, Laden. He's right here, he's right here. Hey, he's give me the hook. hook. I right need the fucking shark hook. It's all right, it's all right, take it easy. I got you. It's a monster. Okay, Marlon, hold this. Come on over here when we can. Cam, you're doing good, just, you're doing good. Good job, Cam. Good job. Okay. He was you're way neutral, too hot. Right, yeah, I'm in neutral. Okay. No, you're not. No, you're not. Put it in neutral. Oh. Still here, Layden. Uh, reverse, Layden, reverse. Neutral. While my dad was reeling up Mr. Biggs, I was behind the wheel. And I was getting very stressed and scared because like, and this, this thing's coming up and it's huge. And I'm like, I don't know if I'm doing the right thing. I don't know if I should have it in like neutral or reverse, even though they're yelling at me. And I'm just, all this is going through my head like, what do I do? He's still That's there. Right. I don't know how he's still there. There you go. He got on the prop. Not the shark hook this time. I didn't know. Can't Jordan wanted the gaff. This is the fish we after. Under the jaw, not in the mouth. Under the jaw, hard. Go right, pop the I hook out. I want to get a good hook. I don't want to hit it weird. Right, there you go. There you go. Under the jaw, hard in it. Get it in. Okay, watch out, coming in. You're in the boat. Heads up, watch your feet. Yeah! Yes! Yes! Yeah! Good job, yeah! man. Oh! Yes, yes! Yeah! That's a fish! Yeah! That's what we've been looking for! <laughs> Where's Chaos! Yeah, man! Here, look out. Woo! Good job, that's my biggest halibut I've ever caught. Yeah! So fish hits the deck, we immediately jump on it with the old freaking whacker and everybody is absolutely elated. It was a freaking fight of the trip. The fish absolutely went nuts and it was a big one. Yeah! We did it. That took a lot of search and we did it. Woo! Way to go team. And, j and just Fun like yeah. yesterday, dude, once we started drifting, once we found a halibut, like they're not messing around, they're eating. Yep. Like yeah. you drop it on him, I mean, he hit that rod and I think I missed him the first time. I dumped it back down. Second he started to grab me, I opened the freaking bail, and he just whoop, like game over. Holy cow. Hell yeah, Cam. Yes! Awesome! Yeah. That's like a fish box and a half worth right there, boys. This thing's gotta be 100 pounds. It's gotta be 100 pounds. Gotta be a triple digit, guys. Absolute freaking tank. And right then and there, we knew that almost spending almost a full day just trying to hunt one big special fish, like the culmination just kind of came all together with that one. All of us were so relieved and felt so accomplished when we were able to get that shark hook in that halibut and bring it onto the boat. It's a memory that's gonna last in my brain forever. Good job, man. Oh, he doesn't fit. There we go. Hey! Hey! hey, hey. Oh, sh bad, bad news. Party! Though. Bad news, though. We gotta bleed it. <laughs> oh, no. Pull back out Let's again. Go. Dude, that thing absolutely kicked my ass at the freaking surface. Dad, I'm so You're right. Well, he's dead. Got him. Got him. <laughs> ah. Woo! Okay. That put a brand Nine more of that size. <laughs> <laughs> All right guys, we're setting up for the last drift of the day. It's been a long freaking tough one. As you can see, it's been really wearing on the, the kids. You know, he's, I think he's really, yeah, he's out cold. Been kind of a tough, boring one, but we put in the work, we put in the hours, got a big one. As you guys can see here, we just, once we found that larger fish, we were just running back and forth over there, running drifts. We're gonna kind of run a drift off this ledge now, just because we figured we might as well give it a shot. See if we can wrestle up one more and then we're gonna head to the barn. Come on, come on. 
Good one? Leave the link. Huh? Leave the link. This is a butt. It's a butt. It might be a butt. Could be a butt. Could be a butt. <laughs> but, nope, it's a canary. Giant. So back at the dock, we pulled this fish out and, and Joel, the owner of Fish Baron Alpha, was sitting there going, man, that's the biggest one brought in this year by far. Yeah. What's it say? Over limit. <laughs> it, went to, it went to like 52 and then said OL. <laughs> so Joel, get yourself a couple like 100, 200 pound scales down here, man. Come on, like really? But maxed it out. We took some measurements. We kind of know what it is. But let's just say he's right up there towards 100 pounds. So we hit the filleting table, we fillet this beautiful halibut up, admire these chunks of meat. There you go. Now that <laughs> is some fish and chips. Flays on it were that big. And like I said, man, we got a couple nice baskets of fish to take home. Super excited to eat them. <laughs> Plot. Now it's time to get back to the hotel, fill our bellies, and get a good night's rest for tomorrow's adventure. Yeah. Oh, yeah. 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 Oh, yeah! Crazy looking fish. That's a real one. That's a real one. Legal. Legal beagle. That's what's waiting. He's right here. He's right here. Hey, give me the hook. Big 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 give me the hook. Big give me the hook. Big yeah! Yeah! yeah. So true to this trip's form or any trip when you go to Alaska, you cannot control the weather. Day four, we have this plan. We wake up, we immediately see the swell's gonna be too big, the wind's gonna be too big, so we have to change course. Go on up we decided to take a route up the inside passage to avoid some of the wind and weather and go explore a completely new area none of us has ever seen. We got two missions. We're trying to find a big halibut and we're trying to find some monster lynx. out of the fog and it looked seriously like we were in another world. The landscape changed, the trees changed, the water looked like a different color, and above all, it looked fishy. So after about an hour boat ride, we hit the open ocean and the strategy for today was more to try to pick on some lingcod, get some more black rocks, have some fun. So we headed over to some offshore rocks and we started banging away on the black sea bass. Go down. Oh, that's a nice one. Oh, that's a really nice one. Oh, go easy, go easy. Oh, don't, no, 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 God. There it is. Oh! 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 Wow, look at this everybody. Look at how gorgeous this China rockfish is. That is one of the coolest looking fish in the ocean. Radical colors. Oh, you just lost him, dude. Too much pumping, not enough reeling. Just stuck him. Just stuck him. <laughs> oh, he's barely hooked. I got a little small he left on him. Look at that one, boys. Well, halibut hasn't been working out for us this morning, but I'll take a few of those. Oh, 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 oh. oh yeah, Bendorama. Oh, the jumper. It's a jumper. There it is. Black rock. See, bud. 
So as we're sitting off on these islands trying to catch these rockfish, I cast out there and I'm just like reeling this dart in fast, not even jigging it, just reeling it. Boom, something hits it. Oh, like, my God, I might have I can't go in there. Move it. That's a salmon. What is a salmon? No, you still got him. That's probably a salmon. Yeah, right. It's a nice one. It's a nice one. It's a nice one. It's a nice one. Nice salmon. So right away, Marlon, because he's caught a few salmon in his life, I guess, knew he's like, that's a salmon. He's like, that thing hit me on the real end, and it had the head shake, and it started circling around the boat, and shortly thereafter, it came up to the surface, and all we could see was crow. Oh, beautiful looking. Come on, there's nothing over here. Be easy on me, buddy. Yeah. Oh, come on, baby. Ah, boy! <laughs> he might be good, dude. I think he's good. Come on, drop him. I'm trying to just not. That's legal. I think he's legal. That's legal beagle. Oh, yeah, that's 30. All yeah. day! Yeah. Come on! Yeah. <laughs> right job, brother. Figure out a new tactic. Casting real. On a dart. <laughs> Cromer! Alright, well, Marlon just picked up him. So even though we weren't even targeting salmon this trip and we have plenty of salmon at home, it just shows that there's just a great opportunity for anglers to come up here and experience some salt water Chinook fishing and some great silver fishing later on in the year. Turns out to be a 30, 31 inch fish. They have to be 28 to keep. So he's well past that. And we decide, you know what? We're bringing one of these Sitka salmon home. Uh-oh, what is that? No, you're fine. I don't think it has the right head shape. I could feel it grab it, and I just figured, you know what, it was probably another canary because it wasn't even fighting, it ate a big, big jig, and it didn't have the halibut head shake uh, like all the other fish we've been caught the last three days. You saw that downrigger? Yep, the release clip gone. I'm reeling it up, and I'm not paying attention because I just have my head down and cranking, and I hear Jordan go, whoa! Holy like, shit! Oh my god! Oh my god! Whoa. Okay then! I think uh, that might be my lane, guys. Uh, yeah, yeah. That was underwhelming. <laughs> Holy crap! Oh my god! Look at that thing! That's a freaking lane and a half. Oh my god! It's a monster! Oh, he's way big. He's way, way too over. big. Yeah, I mean, he's 38, 39. Big old yeah. snaggle. Look at that! Look at that mouth. Jeez. <laughs> Wow. <laughs> That's a big fish. He's heavy, I'm putting it back. <laughs> Hard to argue with those results. Thing didn't really fight on the way up, but man, what a cool fish. Oh, look at that. Too big. Too big even to keep in Alaska. What in the world is this? Like, it's, I could feel like weight on my lure, but I had no clue what it was. At this point, I think it's a rock. I'll have like a rock or something, watch. Octopus. Hell yeah. Grab it, Jordan. Whoa, Get him in here. All right. That thing is so creepy weak. It's like an alien. Wow. Look at them all sprawling out. So cool. Wait, let's not throw them yet. What are you doing? He's sticking. That is so cool. So when you're out here in Alaska, we're all kind of a team. You know, we're all doing everything we can to try to make sure that this boat is operating correctly, everyone's being safe. Cam's running the boat a lot, so he's relying on me and Jordan to get the gear going. Well, I was asleep, I think. I don't even remember, but Cam, I just remember Cam saying, hey, Jordan, we good? We good? Yep, we're good. Next thing I know, we weren't good. Oh, we're not good. We're not. Oh, Sorry, Cam. What was that? That was a rod. We lost a rod? Yeah. Where was it at? It's sitting right here. Thanks all the side. We good now? Yeah, we're all the way good now. Oh, we're not good. 
That was a rod. So after we land that lane cod and go back, we decide, you know what, we're gonna go bounce around a little bit for halibut and some other links, just because we hadn't been to that whole system of bays and inlets. We're going dinosaur hunting now. This pinnacle went from 400 feet and it's still going up. It says it goes to 40. Look at how many fish are sitting on top of this. Oh my go. You wanna catch a, hey, go, lay the dart. dart. So that's the biggest school of fish I've seen on this finder, but there's gotta be some big links feeding on them underneath it. Wow, look at this. This is gonna get gnarly. How do you not have a fish right now? Right, right here is gonna get them, boys. Procure squid set. Game time. We're gonna drop it down with the big metal wing cod hunter. We got millions on. He's gotta go back. No more kills on that as well. Not even close. He goes. Yeah, we're juvenile sling land. How oh, pretty. One more species for the day. Kelp greenling and a prettier one than I've ever seen. Got really interesting color on those dorsal fins. It's really cool. So pretty. He is not from the dinner table. Go He's going home. I don't know what it is anymore. I just don't know any more addicts. He's, He's getting smaller though, I can tell you that much. It looks like a little redfish. Over to the descender he goes. So we bounced around a lot fish shallow stuff, fish some deep stuff, ended up dropping a few more times for halibut, but honestly didn't have that much of a productive afternoon, but I was okay with it because I am pretty darn certain that Marlon and I and the gang are going to be back here at some point in time, and so if anything, we are scouting for our next mission. after four days of fishing, I'm a little bummed to leave here. There's there's so much more to explore. There's so much more to do. You know, these self-guided trips, are, I think as you guys, as we go a little further on into the years, you're gonna see more and more of these because this was just such a unique opportunity to come up and to do what we want, you know, struggle, succeed, fail, whatever it might be, explore. And Joel and his operation really gives you the opportunity to do that. He's got a lot of these beautiful boats just sitting down here ready to go, you rent the boat, and, and then you're on your own. But what Joel has here is really special, and I cannot wait to bring some of my other buddies and my kids up here another time. So I cannot say enough to Fish Baranoff and Joel. He literally brought us here, opened his arms, just like we were family. And the cool thing that I've seen since I've been here is all of his clients and all these people that are fishing with him and renting his boats, you can tell he treats them all like that. They're his family. He's got little jokes with him. A lot of times we're all in the fishing shack, like eating dinner together. It's just such an awesome environment. And huge shout out to you, Joel. Thank you so much for having us up here, dude. And all you addicts that are watching, you gotta get here. I'm telling you, this is so amazing, especially if you know how to run a boat and you understand the ocean, and you've ever wanted to catch halibut or lingcod or salmon. It's a ridiculous experience. It's everything anybody could ever wish for when you come to a place like this. The friendship, the hospitality, the beauty, the amazing fishing, and the incredible, incredible accommodations and food made this one of my favorite trips I've ever been on in Alaska for sure. Thank you so much to the state of Alaska. Thank you so much to Fish Baranoff and Joel. And thank you to everybody that helped make this video happen. Couldn't do it without you.